So at the end of last class, we were talking about plasticity modeling, and we sort of uh, were looking at a special case where we had this perfectly plastic material. One that would have a stress strain curve that looks like this in a uniaxial stress test, right? And we had first investigated what the stress components would look like in that scenario, and, and so now we were looking at how, what the strain components would look like, strain components of the, of the full stress tensor um, undergoing this type of deformation with the understanding that the, the uni, you know, so again, the uniaxial test, uniaxial stress test, we're applying a stress like this, and with the understanding in this scenario that the strain in the one one direction is a, like a boundary condition, so you know, it's something we're going to specify. We're going to pull it in one d stress until say 20 percent strain. 20 percent is arbitrary, but just to give you a, an idea of what we're talking about. Okay, and so in order to def def define those strain components, uh, we use this additive decomposition of the strain. Right, that the total strain is some elastic strain plus plastic strain. And, and then in order to do that, we sort of had to define a new constitutive model for the evolution of the plastic strain. And that, and that was basically this guy right here. Okay, and again, sometimes we'll, we'll write it in rate form. Like that. And then we showed what this term here evaluates to, right? And that, that is the deviatoric stress. So that's what all this was about. And that was a homework problem too, right? So that's sort of where we ended last time. I also want to point out that, and I'll go to a new page here. Even though we may write this like this sometimes. Alternatively, and I'll use it later today, you may also see this uh, written like this. where the magnitude of a tensor, Sij, is defined as the square root of Sij, Sij, okay? And so then you, then you might even, you could define this as some new tensor, Qij. And that's the so-called unit tensor. And just understand that there's, there's really no difference between these two things. Because lambda dot is some, at this point, undetermined. We'll, we'll determine it later. But it's just a, it's like a multiplier. or It's a constant scalar function. And so the, f and it's something we're going to solve for. And so the, in, in this form, this term here is a direction that has magnitude, right? In this form here, it's a direction, it's a unit direction, has no magnitude. So when we go to solve for lambda, we're either going to solve, in, in this case, it'll include the magnitude, right? But here, here it wouldn't. So it's really no different. And we'll speak more specifically about what this lambda dot is in, in a second, but just understand that it doesn't really matter if you write the equations either way. I mean, what we're really concerned with here with is the direction, not the magnitude. The magnitude can be found when we solve for lambda. Okay, and this thing is it's called a flow rule, but more specifically, it's called an associated flow rule. And the reason for that, remember, you know, if we if we look at this von Mises yield surface, and again we're looking down the hydrostat, looking down the line, sigma 1 equals sigma 2 equals sigma 3 in stress space. This is a circle, right? 
when we're looking down that line, well, this, this direction is normal to that surface, right? And so that's why it's sort of called associated flow rule. Associ associated flow rule. Because the flow, the flow, or the evolution of the plastic strain is associated with the yield surface, okay? And in this case, it's normal to the yield surface. But there are things, and they're sometimes used in soils or geomechanics, where the flow is not necessarily associated to the yield surface. All right, so it could be something else or some other law. And the, phys the physical nature of that kind of flow rule, kind of, uh, called a non-associated flow rule, is um, both physically called into question and mathematically called into question. But nevertheless, they sometimes work. This, so they're used. So just so you know about it. We won't really talk about it in, in this class, but so we're just talking about this associated flow rule. So with that, um, then